The corporatist state and global media war against free speech is in full swing. How do I know? Take a guess. So Russell Brand has been in the news lately, and if you haven't thought about him since his divorce from Katy Perry, you might have missed his, um, transformation. You might remember Brand as a left-wing comedian who got famous in the 2010s for saying things like, None of us can be happy as long as any of us are treated with discrimination. He billed himself as an anti-establishment, anti-corporate free thinker. You talk vaguely about revolution. What is it? A socialist egalitarian system based on the massive redistribution of wealth, heavy taxation of corporations. He would go viral for having all of these ridiculous fights with Fox News hosts. Strive to be fair. Strive to be fair. Yeah. When The Guardian named him as one of the heroes of 2014, they described him as the best thing that's happened to the left in years. When they say conservative, what are they trying to conserve, actually? It's hatred. But 2023 Russell Brand has a slightly different vibe. New footage appears to show that January the 6th was not an attempted insurrection. There's only eight of us! How can this be a thorough clinical trial? Election interference in the Clinton campaign. Over the past few years, Brand has become a right-wing darling. He hosts a daily live stream where he regularly features right-wing reactionaries like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Candace Owens, and Tucker Carlson. Have you got everything you need? Can I offer you I've any more my... snacks, nicotine, I've gum? Got... He's become a major peddler of conspiracies about everything from vaccines to the war in Ukraine to the Clinton body count. The statistically high number of people that have taken unusual decisions after knowing the Clintons. And he's become buddy-buddy with the same right-wing news outlets that he used to condemn. So we are honored to have him with us. He's the host of Stay Free with Russell Brand on Rump. Rumble. It's like, why did this happen? How did we go from this left wing commie scum named Russell Brand to this? I'm super excited. I'm welcoming Russell Brand to the show. <laughs> yes. If we want to understand Brand's radicalization, we need to understand his YouTube channel. It's been around for over a decade and it's had like three different eras. God, I want to make a Taylor Swift joke here, but like, I don't even want to do her dirty with that association. Thank you. First, the lefty era. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was reading. You wouldn't get it. In 2014, Russell launched The Trues, a political commentary web series that focused on criticizing right-wing media. He publishes episodes comparing Fox News to ISIS and Nazis and accusing them of fueling the war on drugs. ISIS is a fanatical religious terrorist organization. So's Fox News. He starts The Trues alongside publishing his book Revolution, in which he advocates for a non-violent social revolution against capitalism. Let me know what you think. His YouTube show really reflects that anti-establishment, anti-corporate persona, producing these boilerplate left-wing takes that really worked for me and other 18-year-olds on Reddit. He asked questions like, is capitalism a religion? How can we stop Islamophobia? Would a president with a vagina make a difference? Should you be paid as much as your boss? And these videos do pretty well, usually around 100,000 to 300,000 views, but they're not exactly viral, in part because they're kind of heady. Fear is just a thing we've got to travel through. Brand invites a bunch of left-wing thinkers to have these messy, complicated conversations about economics and revolution and the dangers of celebrity culture. It's all good, but it's kind of inaccessible. Now, how do we build communities around those values? Talk to me about decentralized autonomous communities and how they could work and what the hell that means. In one interview, Brand is talking about how the media uses fear tactics to scare people and pivots to reading philosophy about how humans are too afraid of Dying? The subject of death, says Ram Dass, is a topic most of us would generally rather avoid. It's giving first date with a freshman philosophy major. And Brand dabbles more and more in this high-mindedness until eventually we get to era two. Around 2017, Brand decides to pivot. He's still doing some political stuff, but the Trues is publishing more and more self-help content. You need a spiritual practice in order to be happy. He publishes a couple of self-help books about recovering from addiction. Any behavior that you'd like to change, this book can help you with it. He starts inviting on spiritual leaders and other self-help authors and doing guided meditations and focusing on topics like how I stop self-sabotaging, freedom from pain, and five habits that could destroy your relationship. How are you gonna stop self-sabotaging? He's still doing the free thinker shtick, but now he's 
really free. If consciousness has always been present, then we have a chance of real change rather than superficially shuffling chessboard pieces around on the black and white Masonic grid of our, uh, what, who's them dudes? Illuminati. It's all pretty harmless, but again, it's a, a little heady. What does Russell believe happens after death? Well, my best guess is based somewhat on ideas of panpsychism. The views on these videos are even worse than his lefty content. A lot of it doesn't even break 100k, and it ends up being some of the worst performing content on his channel. But then, something happens. Near the end of 2020, Brand is posting his typical content, How Money Corrupts Us, 42,000 views. How to Panic Less, 63,000 views. Can Loneliness Destroy You, 86,000 views. Then he publishes COVID Vaccines, Skepticism or Trust, a video where he raises doubts over the safety of COVID vaccines. Any of you that want to have unshakable faith in the emergence of these vaccines, do not Google Pfizer scandal. And that gets over a million views. And the commenters are thrilled. Have to be honest, never used to be a fan of this guy, but this channel's actually awesome. I don't know how I've gone this long and just found Russell's YouTube channel. I've never been a fan of Russell, but he makes some intelligent points here. And Bran goes back to his normal content. Save yourself by saving others, 37,000 views. Annie Lennox on how it feels to be an entertainer, 80,000 views. Is the pandemic being used to mask a wealth and power transfer? 1.5 million views. And the commenters are eating it up. I have a renewed respect and admiration for this man. Why am I so late in realizing that this guy is utterly brilliant? New fan here. Brand quickly realizes that his conspiracy content gets way more engagement than his self-help stuff. So at the end of 2020, it's time for another rebrand, baby. Woo! It's tea. Why do the media hate you? Pretty quickly, Brand's channel starts devolving into a cesspool of right-wing paranoia. A relentless march towards tyranny where ordinary people are mercilessly crushed. He starts making videos about the Great Reset, a conspiracy theory that claims that climate change is an excuse to control the people. The Great Reset. You will own nothing and you will be happy. And the videos do incredibly well. 1.1 million, 2.7 million. So he starts making more and more and more. He branches out to new conspiracy theories too. Conspiracy theories about Hunter Biden, conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton, about the war in Ukraine, about the origins of COVID, about the January 6th riot. Is it time to disband the FBI or would that amount to shutting down a key wing of the Democrat party? And these conspiracy theories are a hit. All the videos I just showed you have around a million views or more. You can see in this chart how Brand's view count starts spiking once he pivots to being more reactionary. So Brand pivots even harder. He changes his whole aesthetic. Gone are the days of the soft-spoken wellness guru. Grief is the price we pay for love. Now every video starts with Brand just screaming a bunch of nonsense. Coo! Coo! What does it do? It cheers up NATO and it distracts you! His thumbnails change too. In 2020, they're soothing, simple, and they all feature this like new age symbolism. By 2021, he's going for shock value. Every thumbnail is a split screen of him making some horrified face next to some cheap composite image. This one just says, the end is near, with the title, the establishment wants you dead. It's gimmicky, but it works. Brand's views keep climbing. And as they do, his video titles get more and more ridiculous. At the start of his transformation, it's, was Trump right? Trump was right, Trump is right. But pretty quickly, Brand's channel goes full clickbait. It's starting! Here we go! It begins! Why is no one stopping this? It just happened. This will destroy us. This will end us. It's over. The end. All this gloom and doom paranoia brings Brand a new financial opportunity. Sponsorships. In 2021, Brand's videos start including advertisements for supplements. The world's first probiotic to support gut, brain, and immune health. And God knows you need good natural immunity these days. Right, kids? Greens powder. Field of Greens is a science-backed formula of specific fruits and vegetables you won't find in any other product. Then gold. There is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold make it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold. And Brand isn't doing this alone. He starts inviting more and more right-wing guests onto his show. In 2021, he interviews Ben Shapiro and it becomes one of his most viewed videos of all time. Shapiro invites Brand on his show. You know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Russell, thanks so much for joining the show. It's great to talk to you. 
Wow, man, you do a good job of this. Thanks, Ben. His new shtick gets him invited on other shows, too. He goes on Joe Rogan to complain about the Democrats. I don't think that they are creating an agenda to advance the interests of vulnerable people. He goes on Bill Maher to complain about MSNBC. I've been on that MSNBC, yeah. mate. It was right. propaganda. And then in 2023, he goes on Fox News, the network he has spent his career criticizing. Not as a critic, but as a hero. Russell Brand has been an actor, a comedian, a podcast host for decades. All of a sudden, he's one of the most forceful voices for the truth in the English-speaking world. So what happened here? Is it possible that Russell Brand genuinely had a radical change of heart and mind in less than a year? Maybe? I mean, I'm not in his brain, thank God. But there's a simpler explanation for what's happening here. Call it rift drift. See, the problem with the kind of free thinking that Russell was doing in his lefty era is that it's hard to sell. Sure, Brand can complain about Fox News and talk about how the media sensationalizes things to keep us watching, but like, then what? How many times can you tell people they need to focus on more serious issues like environmental justice or antitrust laws or possible alternatives to capitalism like, oh my god, it's so boring. There's no story arc, there's no heroes and villains, there's no sex. And more importantly, there's no reason to keep coming back. If the problem is that corporate media sensationalizes things, then why not turn it off? You could just stop watching Fox. Go outside, touch grass, call your mom, tell her you love her, find a stranger, give him a kiss consensually, start a religion, I don't know. What's the point in watching Brand make the same argument over and over and over again? In his self-proclaimed last episode of The Trues, even Brand admitted that he was bored of making these same free-thinking arguments about the media. How far can you go with this cyclical reporting on cyclical news. So then what is Brand really selling? What's Brand's brand? Do people really want to watch a washed up comedian explain how money corrupts us or how we need a global revolution against corporate power? Obviously not. Turns out free thinking is hard to monetize. It can't be good, can it, to spend all this time, our eyes resting on screens, people on the other side of the screen hiding, trying to sell us something. The more people can actually think for themselves, the less they need carnival barkers like Brand to tell them what's what. And that's bad for engagement. Conspiracy theories give grifters like Brand a way to keep making money. First, you scare your audience. Globalist agenda, the relationship between governments, big business, and a corrupt media are able to crush any dissent. Then you keep them loyal. Only I can be trusted because everyone else is lying to you. You have to find figures, like me, that you trust in media and get your information from them. Brand's videos will often hammer this message home with titles like, we predicted this, and we saw this coming, and we knew it. And then, once you've got them loyal to you, you charge them. Give me money so I can keep exposing the truth. All those other sources, they'll lie to you, but I would never do that because I love you. I love you, and so. If you believe in free speech, standing up to power, refusing to believe their lies, and finding new truths together, then join my Awakened Wonders community. Money, please. In 2022, Brand launched a locals community where fans could pay $60 a year to talk to each other and see some extra videos of him. Click that red button now and join our movement. Bathe in the rapture. Become an Awakened Wonder today. And people say this is like a cult. They sure do. And to be fair, he's not the first cult leader to do this. In fact, Brand's conspiracy shtick is almost identical to what another conspiracy theorist has been doing for the last 20 years, Alex Jones. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Like Brand, Jones built himself as an anti-establishment free thinker. They just want to extinguish thinkers because it's like a big bright light in a room of vampires, they don't like it. Like Brand, he used conspiracy theories to keep his viewers loyal to him. Folks, I've been told this by high up folks, they say, listen, Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. And like Brand, he used that loyalty to make money, selling everything from nutritional supplements to doomsday prep supplies. It's an investment in freedom and fighting the globalists and we need the funds desperately. At one point in 2018, Jones's show was making $800,000 a day. Do you have any idea how much $800,000 a day is? I don't, like what is that number? As the New York Times reported, Jones's fundamental insight was that his audience is also a nearly captive market for the goods he peddles. Products intended to assuage the same fears he stokes. This is do or die time. If you want to keep us on air, they are trying to silence you. They're trying to take down the leading voice of 
Resistance? But while Jones and Brand may be using the same shtick, there's one big difference between them. See, Alex Jones had to build his conspiracy empire from the ground up. Well, I can assure you, I don't make any money off public access. In 1999, Jones got fired from his local radio station for being a wacko. And he had to start broadcasting his radio show independently from his own house. Anytime he dabbled in conspiracy theories, he'd get yeeted by a bunch of radio stations, making it harder to reach new audiences. He was a fringe outlier, and it took him decades in obscurity before he got enough attention to break into the mainstream. But now, we're in the golden age of grifters, baby. Thanks to YouTube, Brand was making an estimated $2,000 to $4,000 per video posting every day. That's up to $1.46 million a year in YouTube alone. At the end of 2022, Brand used his YouTube channel to announce he was moving to Rumble, a right-wing video platform that's riddled with QAnon and anti-vax conspiracy theorists. We have had to move to Rumble to assure that we are not censored further. We would prefer you joined us on Rumble. He got an exclusive deal with Rumble, producing a a show called Stay Free, which is ironic considering how often he uses it to beg for money. We need you with us now more than ever. Brand is airing his comedy special, Brandemic, directly on Locals, which is a crowdfunding site for free speech proponents who've been banned from Patreon that's owned by, oh, would you look at that, Rumble. And while he still posts on YouTube, he mainly uses it to steer fans towards platforms where he can charge them money. If conspiracy theorists can keep some form of presence on a mainstream platform, they will because they understand that the purpose of that is to reach new audiences. They will use alt tech platforms for more extreme content, speaking to a harder audience. Join us on Rumble every single day. This is the new reality of the free thinking grift economy. Conspiracy theorists like Alex Jones used to have to worry about going too far and losing access to mainstream platforms, but now they don't need them. Like Brand Jones is now broadcasting a show on Rumble. Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast on Spotify. Tucker Carlson gets millions of views on Twitter. And there are dozens of popular conspiracy theory channels on YouTube. These grifters are constantly cross-pollinating. Tucker goes on Brand's show, then Brand goes on Rogan, then Rogan goes on Jones, and Jones uses his show to direct his viewers back to Tucker. We're very, very proud of you, Tucker, and your team and we salute you. It's a circuit of conspiracy grifters all going on each other's platforms so that they can sell their viewers merch and subscriptions. So many of Alex Jones's ideas have entered into the mainstream. He's a brilliant person to talk to. He's an extraordinary man. Brand isn't a free thinker. He's a performer who is adapting his act to whatever he thinks will make him the most money. And now that there's an entire conspiracy economy to profit off, he won't be the last. Oh man, maybe it really is over.